It's time to assemble my space shuttle. Roll the music! G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now following on from my last video, where we had a look at this kit, I started building the motor, the rocket engines at the rear there, and it required a little bit of finagling going together, but generally the parts fitted rather well. Now, this is basically all there is to it. There's a little base, and then there's this part, that's actually two parts there, glued that um, tubing into that back sort of engine part to make it easy to assemble. These parts are also made of two, there's little tanks or something or other, they've got a little top on them, and then they've got um, the little thimbly base, and there's two of those and they fit in nicely. All the parts actually fitted together rather well. Tolerances were quite good. They required quite a bit of cleanup. There was a lot of flash and a lot of seam lines, but nothing the average modeler can't fix. This is the control panel, which is all very lovely with all those dials and everything, but it gets stuck in the back there and you'll just, you'll never bloody see the thing. But anyhow, it's, um, it's nice for what it is, you know. And this is a manifold here for um, the exhaust for this bloody atomic motor, although how it all actually works, God only knows. I actually did some research and there was an Orion shuttle concept back in the 60s, and it was to use an atomic motor. So how about that? So um, there was a little bit of factual basis to this whole craft, and that's probably why Stanley Kubrick sort of used the idea in, um, in his movie. So there you go. But that's the motor, that's how it looks, and I was pretty happy with that. The fuselage went together really well, and I'll talk more about that later, because basically the wings clipped in, and all those parts were fine once they were cleaned up. There is an issue with panel lines. But anyhow, the um, back of the motor there, I drilled out the holes for the rocket exhaust to come out of, and I also scratch made those little protuberances that stick out the back. It was much easier than trying to straighten the bent ones that were on there. Now the motor, I sort of thought, is there something missing? And I looked at a lot of photos of shuttle motors and things like that from the 60s, found they had all these wires wrapped around them. So I started to build that out of some scrap wire I had, and look, that was the result. I think that makes the motor look so much better. So this is as far as I've got with the um, Space Cliffer, <laughs> or Space Shuttle, just depends which one you, you think it should be called. Um, I'm quite sort of encouraged by Clipper. I think that gives it a very sort of, you know, bit of a je ne sais quoi. <laughs> I don't know. Clipper sounds good, doesn't it? We all know what a Space Shuttle is. So if we call it a Clipper, we know it's something different. Now the... Um, little protrusions out the back here. Yeah, well, they were, um, as, I, as I showed you in the, uh, the still photos, they're, um, they're scratched. They're just a little bit of, um, I think they're one millimeter evergreen tube, which I uh, put in there. That was a much better replacement. What I thought I'd talk about now are some of the problems with the fit. It's not too bad overall. Um, I mean, the, um, the back end here, it's fitting in very nicely. My motor's in there now. And there's my uh, motor. I had to make a few adjustments to it. Oops. The, um, the manifold was sitting a bit high with some of my wires, so I removed a few. I mean, that's all yet to be actually glued solid. Once I remove the liquid tape, I'll reduce some of that height because it's taking up quite a bit at the moment. It's probably pushed it up about a millimetre. And then all of that will come apart easily again. Because for the moment, yeah, the um, the motor all comes apart. Well, maybe, maybe it does. So it's quite a bit of sticky in there. That's okay. So um, it's all bits, all bits. I'll disassemble that later. Now, the reason I've done that is so I can paint it, obviously, because it's all different colours. I'm still trying to decide what those bloody colours are. So there's my uh, protuberances. And I also, as I showed in those photos, I drilled out its little bum holes. <laughs> and they do kind of match up with the um, exhaust manifold there. And the idea is to somehow get a blue light going through all of this. So don't know. I'm hoping I can sort of get a little uh, blue LED in there and then it um, floats through and comes out the back here. May be possible. May not be possible. Don't know. Don't know. I mean, whatever. There's still a bit of filling to do here. It'd be nice if that was consistent, but it's not. Some places it's fairly wide, other places it narrows up. I've got to do something there. I think I'll get some perfect plastic putty in and just smooth that out. There's also a few little dents here. Well, they were caused by the part actually having broken off the sprue before I even got it. So it has a few little dents in it. So I'm going to fill that little 
join, make that a bit nicer. That should be good. Um, ultimately, that's all going to be black anyway. Well, actually, the scoops are black, so I will need to keep the V in the shape. So that does need to be smooth, I think. The panels don't join up too badly on this back cowl. They're worse on the front, and I'll get to that. There are a few steps, like here there's a tiny one. So these panel lines are stepped out. That's by a good millimetre there. Despite the fact I've, I tried to get the ends, I tried to get this end and this end, the same fuselage you'll see in a sec. Tried to get those flush, but the moulding must be warped and old and rooted, or who knows. There's a good one, if not two millimetre gap there. So I'm going to have to fill and rescribe across there. It's a bit horrible. Um, there is a little bit of a ridge there, despite the fact getting the front and the, the back of this, uh, or the back and the front of this, so that they were, they were pegged and they were nice and you know, level with the two halves, or aligned. The middles are all warped and they came out of shape. So there's a bit of sanding and cleaning and filling to do there. The underside was a lot better, and that's the part that will be seen the least. The underside actually does line up rather nicely, which is sort of annoying. <laughs> You'd be better off having some of the irregularities on the bottom of it, where you can sort of hide them because no one will see or you know, paint it up as panel lines. It's basically going to leave that, that center panel line in here. There's not much point trying to clean that out. But on the top here, we've got all kinds of things happening, and it would look a lot nicer, especially if like that whole triangle was a panel and... You know, maybe this was a panel. There's also some sink marks. There's little sink marks here and there. They will need to be filmed. So there's a bit of filling to do. And it's mainly that join there and around there. But it's not too bad. You know, here I basically, you know, I can just sand all that. Oh, there are some sink marks there. And that's about it. Basically, that's not too bad for the stern. For that little cow. Then we get to the fuselage of this, um, this critter. Now, um, I've just liquid taped this thing together. So these parts... Actually, see, there's a little tape there. You might be able to see it. And that, that does add a little bit of height. But it is terrific because I can click the part in and see how it goes. And I did try this on the um, stand as supplied by Aurora, which was woeful. The stand buckled and the whole thing just about fell off and broke its little protuberances again. I was rather annoyed. I said a few words like bother. So, um, yeah. Wings are good. I mean, they just require a bit of sand. There's... there's a couple of little sort of depressions here, which I might fill, but you hardly see them. I think if I paint panels different colours, they might disappear because they might be a bit tricky to sort of, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how much they annoy me. I might be able to sand them a bit flatter, so I don't know. And you see that sort of depression there? There's there's quite a big, you know, is a, is a maybe it got hit by an asteroid, you know? Who knows? They might have accidentally bumped it when I'm on docking, you know? That's... um. And that's one on the other side, which is particularly bad. So I might see what I can do as far as sanding and then see if they really require filling. I won't do too much because, as I say, I can hide things by painting panels different colours. There's also a lot of yellow gunk on this kit. Now, I don't know if that's a bloody snail that got in here and has run around with it or somebody had a glue in there. It's, um, I don't know. That might clean off with some alcohol. We'll see how we go. When cementing together the two halves of the fuselage, I was very careful to try and get this part to align and around the um, the front glass to align and, and the nose. I felt if I got those nice and straight, that makes it a lot easier to A-fit this part, and I'll talk about the little scratch part later, and also all these little venting lines here or whatever. This, this little bit of corrugated iron they slept around the back here. <laughs> They'd line up, but there are some horrible sink marks again. So I don't know. I mean, I can take that part off. That's another uh, liquid tape part. So I don't know if I can fill those and maybe scribe. It is rather annoying. It's very prominent there. And whether I can hide it, I can't really hide it with anything. It's going to be right in the way. So that's something I'm going to have to address. But I've, I've got these lines to match up, which is what I was aiming to do. All right, these panel lines. So that was good and um, quite a little bit of sanding of the, um, the back here to line that up and I have pretty much these panel lines here all line up and then this part here lined beautifully um, and even you know this the, the panel line behind here then it gets progressively worse because as you move along the panel lines get further and further out of alignment in the middle here and um, they just become rather wonky and bent out of shape and it's um, you know that was not too bad, but it's um, here, they're, again, they're way out. 
Not as bad as probably that piece on the stern, actually, but there's just so many of them. There is also a trench down here. Uh, the fuselage halves fall in where they join, and there was just no way to get around that. Again, I think over the years, possibly the moulding had um, got old and sad. Don't know. But maybe the kit had just been sitting around and maybe it got a bit of heat on it. Who knows? I mean, it's been, you know, it's nearly 50 years, so <laughs> things are going to happen. Things are going to happen. So the fact that it actually went together as well as it did, and again, the underside fitted beautifully, and the fact that the, the wings all clip in perfectly, I've had to make no adjustments at all to their fit. They've all fitted absolutely spot on. And um, there's this little part here that um, I still don't know. There's supposed to be landing lights or something. Who knows? It's kind of silly. I don't know whether I'm supposed to paint that or not. I don't know. There's no real reference. It, it's kind of pretty. I might try and see if I can draw some holes underneath so the lighting in here lights it up. But back to my panel lights. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're, um, they really are quite wobbly. But believe me, they, they don't line up. I mean, just look at these. They don't line up. Which is, again, it's interesting that the I could get the end to line up two ends right I've got those nice and straight and you think if you've got those and you've got them level away you go but again there's heights and depths like at one point here this part the port side is higher than the starboard side and then you go along to here and it's the opposite the starboard side is higher than the port side there's quite a bit of warpage and, and you know it's quite a bit wobbly that's okay it's an old kit I mean I'm, I'm just repeating myself so what we're going to do is I'm going to correct that by basically putting some super glue in here completely filling that with super glue and then sanding the whole thing back or filing it back until I get the shape again the curve and then I can rescribe my panel lines as I need also some of these panels I want complete I don't want a panel you know I don't want a line down the middle of them so I'll leave them and I'll only scribe a few in fact you know there's only a, a two or three of these where I'm going to actually keep probably that one's one um, and there's probably another one there neighbor's dog's going off its tit again it's um the lady there must be out but it's not too bad for a kit this old you can expect something you could live with it you could just sand all that and call them panel lines and paint them all different colors and camouflage it so you couldn't see it that that's a solution but no i'm going to i'm going to fix that now the um the front section here i have done a little work around now it wasn't my invention it was a uh, i forget i'll try and find out if i can remember who I saw I look I looked at so much stuff when I was researching this but one guy went that that um, seam line under there which I didn't take a photo of I might have a pic I don't know but it is dreadful it is really dreadful and it falls in and it's horrible and there's no way it gives you a nice clean mate up to the windshield so the solution he had was to use a very very thin piece of styrene that's about a 0.5 millimeter and uh, that piece of styrene then you make the shape and then that goes in, covers up all the problems, and then you just simply sand that, sand that into shape around there. I'm going to paint that black anyway as a bit of a uh, anti-glare reflector. Some of the models I've seen have it, some don't. Mine will. So I'll put that in. So that solves that. Sinkholes to fill. Yep. And also we've got a couple of little um, scratch additions and changes to make. We've got a couple of little triangular vents that go here, and there's a little uh, rectangular panel at the back here, which, as I said in the last video, was basically the... Um, the, the ventilator for the loo to let the smell out. Now this shape here looks kind of a bit tricky to make but actually it really wasn't. And I'll quickly show you how I did that because I know some people get frightened by making a scratch part. They go, oh, okay. Just break it down into simple things. Now this is a triangle with a little cutout for around the glass and a rounded top so you don't have the full point. So when you think of it that way, all you have to do is make a triangle and then work out the bits to remove to get it close to shape. So all I did was I measured this two top points here. Okay. Using my tricky little thing here. This is from Hobby Elements and they sent this to me as part of some promotion and it is terrific. I use it quite a lot. So um, there, so we get that measurement there, right? Okay and checking that off on my rule that was two centimeters so i know i needed something basically to start it off i need two centimeters so that's my base now remember as i said this is essentially a triangle 
but the triangle point would extend in front because it's remember it's curved there. So what I need to do is work out the diagonal there of my triangle, okay, and see where that goes through the center line at the front there. So that's one side, and then there's my other side, and it also comes through there. All right, so I know that's the point there. Then I can measure from the front of the windscreen to there, and that'll give me the depth of the point, okay? Yes, I know there's a flaw in this, but I'll explain how we get around that in a sec. So I measured that, and it's um, 27, 27 millimeters, okay? Now, I've measured to the back here of my triangle, and yet, that is only going to the front of there. So I need this size here, I need that measurement there. And I'm going to have to eyeball that, okay? So I eyeball that at three millimeters. Three millimeters means that I need to step in just that little bit, that three millimeters, for what is going to be that edge, that edge there. So now what I need to do is work out the little triangles. And okay, that's three millimeters in, I've got that, but how do I work out these angles? Well, it's not that tricky. What you really need is that width. So you just need the width there, which is one centimeter. So, there you know that's two centimeters. Mark the midpoint, go one centimeter, which is, you know, you can do this in your own um, imperial if you like. So that gives me those two points there. So you're following me? This was two centimeters wide, there's my midpoint, so I've measured out half a centimetre the side of my midpoint, and that has given me all of those. So it's just a matter of join the dots, okay? So join the dot there, and join the dot there, okay? So there's my cutout. Okay, so that denotes that sort of waste. Now I need and you should be using a T-square to make sure that's perfectly straight, but we assume that I did that. Assume that's an exact right angle, that's only degree. I need 27 millimeters, remember? Remember we measured that point from, um, from here to my imaginary apex of my triangle? So, 27 millimeters. Okay, so that is looking very close now, isn't it? But what we've got here is there's a curve. So to work out where that curve is, well, you measure the straight edge until it, it starts turning. It starts turning at about 14 millimetres. Measure there. Yeah, about 13, 14 millimetres. Let's say 13. 13 is a nice number. 13 millimetres. And just to make sure we don't make a cock of this, let's see how far from the cockpit it was. Okay, so from the cockpit, it's 15, which is fine. But you said 30, Harry. Well, it's a circle, remember? It's curving out. It's curving out. So there we go. Now, I could probably freehand draw that, but there is a trick, and this is the trick you need. A little circle drawer like this. These things are stencil. These things are great. So what you need to do now is you know it's got to touch, you need a circle that's going to touch those three points. Okay? So no point if you do it like that, it's going to be bulbous. It's got to be inside that. So you keep working your way down smaller and smaller until you find. So that one is right, but my pencil will always draw slightly smaller. So I go for the slightly wider one there, and then if I then run my pencil in, Look at that, and I now have, that's my whole shape. So now I have designed an exact replacement. So there it is, that's the shape. Now when you make this, you should be pretty right to cut exactly on the lines for this part, because that's going to fit into the windshield. But never cut inside or on top of the lines, always cut just slightly outside of them. Uh, as far as the outside goes, I always go, oh, probably about a millimetre wider, 
because you can trim it off. If you cut it and find it's too small, you bug it. You have to start again. Okay, so that's the thing with a little part like this. Unless it's a square or something and you know it's an exact size, you can just pop it in. But because we're working angles here, I was it was much easier to add the extra. In fact, I needed it because one side fitted flush when I put it in, which is the weirdness of, of things when you actually go to fit them. The other side stuck out a little bit. So I ended up sanding off this side more and that side was just fitting perfectly. So what I did to um, to make that sit nicely is I used the shape of the model, okay? And I just basically rolled into it, like so, all the way along. And here from the nose, I used the, the actual alignment of the nose to get that. And I rolled it in and shaped it in. And I probably could do a little more but I got to a point that I was happy with and I thought, oh, that actually looks quite nice. I don't mind the fact there's a tiny bit of a panel line there. That rather looks good because I'm going to paint mine black. If you're having yours white and you wanted a perfect panel, well, you would just keep sanding until basically the fuse layers merged in, as it did on the, um, on the actual moulding of the model. This little clear part here was a bugger. And um, it was a blob coming off the kit. It was fairly roughly moulded and it required quite a bit of shaping. Uh, again, I worked on the principle that these front edges here would be straight, so I filed those nice and straight. I put that part in before I did my little cover. My cover is sitting over the top of that, and again, hides quite a bad join, because it ended up being very gappy and loose. And uh, Underneath there is quite revolting, it really is. So this part required quite a bit of shaping and filing. I found this end of the plastic curve here, of the windshield was a little bit too tall, I had to shave a bit off, but I went very slowly. I think I took about half an hour to actually fit that part. So once that part had clicked in, I didn't want to chance it falling out and never fitting again or getting lost. So I doused this thing in white wood glue, PVA white glue, right? And um, smeared it into all the little gaps on the joints, which did two things. One, it would cement it in place, and two, it would basically fill in the irregularities. And then I used a cotton tip or a cotton bud, right? And I cleaned the windshield off. And that's it, it's locked in, it's never coming out again. I hadn't blacked out the interior, which is usually a trick you use to stop any light bleed. But seeing as I was only gonna use one LED to light both these cabin lights and the front windshield, and I'm gonna hide that sort of inside here, he's Becker said I probably don't need to do any blacking, uh, that I might be okay because I'm going to paint over the top anyway. So it may all come out in the wash. Anyhow, I could do some tests of that. That will be in one of the next videos where we attempt to light this and see how that all comes together. All right, well, there you go. So that's basically how I made that panel there. And um, if you've ever drawn on your model like I do, and you think, oh, we don't want that in the paint job, all you need is an eraser. Eraser. They're not rubbers, mate. Rubbers are what you do so you don't get your girlfriend pregnant. Get it right. Now, okay, so there we go. That's basically it, and that's where I'm at. So I've got to go away now and start filling in this uh, seam line and then rescribing my panel lines. Well, this video seems to have run on much longer than I expected. So we'll leave it there, and we'll come back when I do the filling, sanding, and painting. So it's goodbye from Australia. And it's Huru from Harry Denny.